It's been interesting because usually what we do is we look to the implied moves on earnings ahead of these reports. And what I would tell you is typically around this time, because it's an important earnings season, we see a lot of movers beat. That hasn't happened recently for the financials, but I think probably as we head into mega cap tech, that will happen more given the focus on it and given how much tech has really driven the value versus growth trade. Let's talk about the financial sector for a minute. Where are you seeing moves in the financial sector and the action there? Yeah, so for the names that have reported, all of them in terms of what they were implied have actually not beaten the magnitude of that move on earnings. But that said, you know, one thing that I think has been interesting in financials is short term, the option sentiment has been fairly bullish, but longer term, so we're talking tenors, three months to 12 months has actually been fairly bearish. So you're actually seeing a rise uh, in puts in terms of that demand of puts relative to calls, which you're not seeing in the one month space. So again, that sentiment is actually starting to shift more bearish in the financial sector versus what we've been seeing recently. Let's talk really quick about the Bitcoin ETF. Um, I know that you're in the, the thought that there's a lot more room for that ETF to run once it starts trading. Why is that? Yeah, you know, what's interesting is about a month ago, we hosted the head of risk strategies at Coinbase, uh, basically to have a discussion about how options and equities are going to be impacted by Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. And, you know, one thing that Gustavo Miguel said to us is, look, equity market participants have a really hard time understanding how things can't be priced into the market because this is something about a market that's so efficient. But really, if you know the equity markets were B students, then the Bitcoin market would be absentee students. That's actually how <laughs> you put it. So so you know they're not there. And and because of that, you know, despite the fact that the headlines have really been out there, it's kind of an institutional base that knows about it. And really, that upside is still there because of the heavy retail base that's participating in the inefficiency of the markets, which obviously ends up, uh, you know, impacting like a Tesla or a MicroStrategy or other companies that are actually physically holding the coins as well. Yeah, MicroStrategy and Tesla, obviously, well, not obviously, but seemingly rallying off of a uh, Bitcoin's price surge in recent weeks. So I want to just continue your metaphor about those uh, crypto holders being absentee students with this ETF. Sounds like they're going to slot into those seats in the back of the classroom. What does that mean to have them in the back of the classroom? What does that mean for the broader equity market? Well, I think two things. The first is, and again, you know, this this was part of our conversation with Coinbase, which was, you know, one interesting takeaway I had from that call was when this becomes more accessible, so this becomes something that, you know, people can, you know, potentially access just directly through a brokerage account or maybe one day through an IRA or 401k, you know, it really changes the game in terms of who is going to be part of it. Um, and I think that expansion is something that's going to be quite interesting for it. And the second part of it is, obviously, if you have companies like a Tesla, for instance, where they're, I, I guess I shouldn't be saying physically, but when they're, you know, holding the cryptocurrency itself, obviously, that's going to start making a correlated impact to those stocks, which is why I think you're seeing their rally. Um, but what, what I think is interesting is the options have been diverging in a lot of these names. So you're not quite seeing that reflected yet in the derivatives market, even though we're starting to see that in the equity market. One thing we want to touch on is uh, Chinese stock and investing in China. What action are you seeing on the options market? Are you seeing any sentiments changing about it with the whole Evergrande situation turning off a lot of investors? Yeah, you know, look, if you hadn't asked me that a month ago, I would have said that uh, most clients, unless they're specialists or even if they are specialists, have called it untouchable, uninvestable. You know, like how do you really have a unique view when it's about sweeping policy changes? I would say that sentiment is really starting to shift. Uh, we see that in the relative equity volatility implied pairs that we track. So they went from kind of 99th percentile, the most bearish sentiment you could possibly have on China. This is using FXI as a proxy to now really coming down. So people, you know, in one way or another are saying this might be the bottom in Asia and they're starting to be more comfortable selling puts in these names, owning upside, uh, what have you in China and the Chinese related stocks. All right, Amy, we're going to give you the last word. One thing to look out for in today's trading day, what would it be? Uh, you know, I think continued headlines on on the cryptocurrencies, I think, is something to watch. And then obviously, I think tomorrow we'll have Tesla earnings, which should be interesting.